Today, we're going to talk a little business and marriage. Hello everyone, I'm Melissa New and welcome to this week's episode of Framed. So this photography couple has been traveling the whole world for their photography business. And the question is, how do they successfully run their business as business partners and as husband and wife? Let's find out. Zach, how are you? Good. I'm doing really good. good. Thanks so much for being on with us. Well, oh, thank you for having me. Yeah. Welcome to Boise, man. Land of the cold. Yes, but mountains. Beautiful. Yeah. So we don't have a lot of those in Nashville. We have rolling hills. And we do have some mountains, but they're about three and a half hours away from us. And they're not quite as big as these ones. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to get to know you. I'd love to get to know the man behind the camera. So tell us, just tell us, I mean, tell us about your growing up years. We had a little bit of time to sit and chat about you, mm -hmm. and you told us some pretty cool stuff about you growing up and about your mom. Can you kind of give us a little, a little down low of you, of yeah. little Zach? Yeah, little Zach, little bowl cut Zach with the chip in the bowl <laughs> that Jody always makes fun of me for. Uh, yeah, I grew up in a tiny town in northern Minnesota, um, kind of a go nowhere, like everybody I knew never really left and did anything with their lives. and. It wasn't a very inspirational place to grow up in cold northern Minnesota, up on the Iron Range, it's called. I grew up in a town of 1,100 people, literally, like tiny. And most people in northern Minnesota spent their time like hanging out at the bar or like doing nothing with their lives. And to give you an idea, like the town I grew up in of 1,100 people had six bars and a liquor store and no grocery store. So a lot of people are like, oh, that's kind of funny. But the reality is it wasn't very funny. It was depressing. You know, it was very kind of sad. And so my parents split up when I was really young, when I was three years old, and um, I just spent most of my life sort of scraping by and my mom just working her tail off. And we kind of had this conversation earlier about, I learned a lot from my mom about how to give and how to give a lot back to other people, even if you don't have anything to give, because she spent 30 years of her life just giving to us, giving of her time, giving of her resources, the limited resources that we did have, she would give everything away. I remember having friends of mine that got kicked out of their family's house that would live with us for months on end and we would just give anything that we had even if we didn't have anything to them all the time and it was very inspiring and when I finally grew up and I got older, um, even though my mom's amazing and inspiring, I didn't have another older guy mentor in my life kind of going, you can do anything you want. You can go get a great job or have a successful business or go to college. I never thought I could do any of those things. And luckily there was a youth pastor for my church that took me out to lunch one day and told me that I could do something with my life. And he happened to not be from Northern Minnesota. He was from somewhere else. So he knew there was more to life other than Northern Minnesota. And he literally, like that conversation at lunch that day changed my life. And he said, I believe in you. I believe that you can go do something else. You could leave here. And literally within three months, I was 21 years old at the time and got my GED when I was 21 because I never went to high school and never had anybody inspiring me until this guy. And when that happened, I felt like I could go do something and I did and it, it changed my life forever. It was pretty cool. You know, we, we, we shot our first wedding in June of 2007, but we got married in November of 2005. And really, to the beginning of 2006, you know, first few months we were married was a very 
pivotal shaping point, even in our photography career, even though nothing we photography had no had <laughs> happened at all, yeah. yeah. Because we started listening to this guy, and we talk about him all the time, but we started listening to this guy named Dave Ramsey, who's a financial advisor from Nashville. And uh, when we first got married, Jody's parents obviously were very concerned that I was a musician, as they should have been, because I was broke. <laughs> and uh, they wanted us to think about our future and our finances and make sure that we were on the right path with that, which was some of the best advice we'd ever gotten, because I, I was more of an on-faith person. We'll just live our lives, and we got love, and that's all that matters. You know? He actually did tell my mom that. I did tell my mom. <laughs> She's like, how are you going to take care of my daughter? And I said, I love her. What do you mean? Like, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> And uh, so we started listening to Dave uh, because he's a financial guy and he was the most influential financial guy in Nashville, probably one of, in, one of the most influential guys in the country. And we started listening to him and he got us out of debt the first six months we were married. And we just had Jody's income because I didn't even have a job for the first few months because I just quit my musician job. And uh, card was slapped on the floor. Exactly. I was yeah. humbled big time at that moment. And because we had gotten out of debt, Dave became a constant source of inspiration to us and we listened to everything he said and throughout that year you know I started listening to him all the time and we started get I got my day job shooting school portraits and then started thinking maybe we could do photography and I came to my wife and said what do you think about doing photography and she was like I love photography sure. I think that'd be cool and because of listening to Dave you know our first 18 weddings we barely made a profit because we weren't charging any money we didn't know anything about business and um, and we'll go back to that but um, the cool thing was, is Dave kept saying, where you're going to be in five years is dependent on two things, the books you read and the people you meet. And we realized that I never read any books, I didn't even go to high school, you know, <laughs> let alone any business books. And I didn't know anybody influential, and Dave was the only person I knew who was a major success, so I listened to every word he said. So, sort of rewind back to... Um, late 2006, we were in a newlywed, newlywed Sunday school class because that's where newlyweds hang out, is with people of their kind. And we were getting into photography and we wanted to shoot weddings because we thought there was probably money in shooting weddings. And to clarify, we were in that group for ourselves, yes. not for photography. <laughs> Bec we were looking right. for a community as a newlywed couple. Right, we were there because of the people. She's keeping and, your story straight. Yeah. That's what I meant. We um, joined to shoot people. <laughs> no, 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 definitely not. But, that's a brilliant idea. Yeah. But there was someone that came into that class that was a newlywed. They were getting married in six or seven months. And, yeah. And we had this little plot one day going home. We said, let's see if we could shoot their wedding, you know, because we didn't know how to get wedding clients. So we knew one that could be a client. So we asked them and they agreed. They said, yeah, I think that'd be great. You know, shoot our engagement session. If it's not awful, yeah. we'll let you shoot our wedding for 500 bucks. That was the stipulation. We had to shoot their engagement <laughs> session and it had to be a success. So we literally booked their wedding for $500, thought we were filthy rich because I'd never made that much money in <laughs> one day, even though weddings are not one day, but I thought yeah. they were because I'd never shot one. Mm -hmm. And sort of between their wedding, which was in June of 07, and this was fall of 06, we got on Craigslist and we uh, contacted different people and did portrait shoots for free and we did some free weddings. And we had our brand at that point, but the, the beginning of, of 07, brand, yeah. we had a brand together, we had our website together, and then we just started shooting here and there just to even get a portfolio. And yeah, so we started experience. booking more weddings um, before our even first paid wedding had come up. Yeah. And then we shot our first wedding in June of 2007 and that's where it started. Photography entered in my life when I was a child. Um, my mom, she worked in a dark room, not a black room, a dark room. <laughs> my mom worked in a photo lab and she had a camera and we were homeschooled for a couple of years and that's where my love of photography came from. And so I, as just growing up, I always remember having a camera with me and I think that was, that was a big part of not who I was, but I, I was just always the person with the camera. So, you know, when I went to youth group and we went to summer camp, you know, I always had a camera. So then photography was, it started young yep. from your mom. Yep. And I want to know, I want to see, I want to know where the emotion is in you. Like I want to get below the surface because I see a very polished and career driven and go getter. What is it that tugs at your heart? Like what is it that makes you tick? 
Ugh. <laughs> I hate this. Um, I think it's people. I think there's so many. Um, just people hurting out there, or lost, or don't know what to do, or are beat down, or are frustrated. And, um, and if I, and even more importantly, we, Zach and I, can play a role in changing people's lives, then um, that, that is what um, keeps us going every day. And sometimes it gets hard, and we're tired, and we have crazy schedules sometimes, and but ultimately that is what keeps us going, is being able to see people in this place and being able to help them get somewhere else and maybe that's in their business maybe that's in their photography maybe that's in their marriage you know maybe that's in their life or just different things it doesn't even have to be like business or photography driven um i think i'm very empathetic to people who are in a situation where they're hurting and just to be able to help them out of that or even just to be a support i think is is really exciting for me it's hard for me to see someone hurting and not do something about it Okay, so we are now super excited because we actually get to see the Greys in action. Dun dun dun! Dun dun dun! Mm -hmm. And we are on, we're at a place called Table Rock and it is so warm right now. How do you feel? Yeah. <laughs> Table Rock. Super warm. <laughs> My nose is blue or so warm. <laughs> <laughs> so this is kind of a challenge because you've got equipment, it's windy, it might rain. Do you guys deal with this on a, on a shootly basis? Every wedding, yes. Really? We, we just shot a wedding uh, this week, past weekend in Destin, Florida. And you're like, Destin, it's beautiful, but we had to shoot in high noon sun where the worst lighting conditions and we had to get amazing pictures. And so. the couple wanted to shoot on the beach. So it's like, as soon as you step down on the beach, it's like blinding <laughs> light, yeah. super and high wind. wind. So yeah. you, you deal with every situation, especially wedding photographers, we deal with every situation. And we've shot in pouring rain, we've shot in the brightest of sun where it's very difficult with photography. So this is easy. <laughs> Having um, Zach and I as a couple, we get to demo to our other couples what we want them to do because oftentimes they're not naturally cute and naturally good. Well, oftentimes they're naturally our couples cute. are naturally yes. cute, yes, but they're not they naturally don't know what to do. comfortable in front of the camera, so it's great because exactly. we can demonstrate that. So, what we're going to have you guys do in a super easy way is going to be so easy when you aren't even going to know what to do with yourselves. So, we're going to have maybe Marielle sit on this side. And what we're gonna have you do is just kind of throw your legs that way. Okay. And then, something in my back pocket. And then Preston, we're gonna have you just kind of sit okay, like this. Back, yeah. Yeah, and we just want you guys looking like this. So you can kind of sit like this, but we're gonna be shooting kind of in here, so it doesn't matter if your foot is like whatever. And both of you guys turn this way a little bit more because we just don't want that sun hitting your face. Yes, oh my gosh, you already look awesome. Dang, Perfect. you guys are good at this. So Jody and I, we, we like to shoot everything in the camera. We don't want to rely on Photoshop to fix our stuff. We're not going to adjust color later. So we're actually going to get a custom white balance and check get our exposure nailed before we take the first shot. Oh my gosh, you guys look incredibly awesome uh -huh. already. How am, I, how am I doing lighting wise, baby? There we go. Money, honey. Dang, yes, closer, closer, too close. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> Smiling, stay close, love it. You look at your business as a whole, and your marketing's fabulous. Your branding, the, the story that you guys tell, you can tell a lot about who you guys are just by going to your website, and that's great marketing, right? Mm -hmm. What got you to that point? I mean, obviously, we're kind of skipping a really big chunk here of business meets yeah. marriage, right. of the hardships yeah. and the yeah. growing pains. Yeah. What happened? Like, how did you guys get to that point of where you're at right now? I think it's been, it's been step by step. And I think oftentimes people think, you know, success, whatever that means to you, is instantaneous. Mm -hmm. And it's everything that we've done and everything that we've learned and everything that we do and put into practice has come from 
meeting people along the way. You know, we run into this photographer and they breathe some sort of encouragement or idea into us. And then we meet someone else, we're listening to the Dave Ramsey show and we are like, ooh, let's read this business book and ooh, let's read this book on marketing and oh, this person does this with branding. Oh, that's good. And I think it's who we are today has been a collaboration of so many people pouring into our lives and different inspirations and different resources that, um, you know, I think that's how we've gotten to where we are today. It wasn't an overnight thing of, this will be our brand and we need a brand and it's just really been a journey that has really yeah. evolved. So Jody and I are here on, what is it called, Tabletop? Rock Top? Table Rock? Rock Top? S something like that. Um, we're at, on the top of a rock. <laughs> um, we rock? have this beautiful sky um, that, you know, this really cool ethereal kind of gray looking sky and this really cool rock. There's actually a little pathway down the side so you can see sort of to the top of the rock if somebody was standing up there. But the problem is, if we stand on a couple over here, not too close to the edge, I promise, but if we stand them over there, try to get a shot of the sky, what's gonna happen is, as you can see the exposure on our face, even probably in the video, if our face is exposed well, we're gonna have a very bright blown out sky and we wanna tone down that sky to bring the focus to our clients. So we've got our handy dandy off camera light here. We're using the Ellen Chrome Quadra, it's called. It's a, a lighting rig that's designed to go on location. It's actually water sealed. You can shoot in the rain with this bad boy. It's got a, 400 watt second pack, which is down here on the ground, and only weighs six pounds, which is very lightweight. And the head only weighs a half a pound, which is awesome. So it's easy to bring on locations. This is what we bring to weddings. Normally we don't have it on a, uh, on a stand like this. We just have it on a monopod. And we have our assistant, because we have an assistant at every wedding, they just hold it and they're kind of our human light stand for the day. All right, here we go, guys. That looks great. Maria looking that way a little more. Jody, get away from that edge. <laughs> get out of there. I got a shot of it. All right, you guys look great. So Preston, just looking out that way, real serious. This is kind of like, yeah, rock star looking. One more. Oh my gosh, amazing! You're married. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> You're business partners. Yes. Slash yep. lovers, slash <laughs> friends, slash best pals, slash I don't like you right now. <laughs> I work with my husband and, and at what lovers, I know. No, I said, yeah. never, oh, sorry. Group. Yeah. So, it, you know, I work my, with my husband, and sometimes you work, you wake up, it's like, okay, my husband right now, business partner. That there, there are those difficult challenges. What, what have you guys experienced? Like, what are the negative parts that people can learn from your experiences of being business partners and hmm. partners? Yeah. I think we do. We meet a lot of couple or a lot of people or uh, men or women that say, "Man, I'd love if my spouse would come to work with me." <laughs> Um, but I think some people are sort of more built to do it, like they have a strong desire to be together all the time. Because Jody and I, this when we just did the separate interviews, that was the first time I think we've ever done yeah. that. It's pretty rare for us to be apart. Probably a two hours a week max, we're actually separated. Yeah. Even in the house, when we're working, we're sitting next to each other, we watch the same TV shows together, we go to <laughs> shopping together, yeah. we only have one car because we don't need two Sounds because we're just creepy. together all the time. But that, <laughs> it does sound a little creepy, but, that but that's sort of who we are and who we're built. Um, but I think the biggest thing that we've learned as being together so much, because if there's a time for tension, it's gonna happen like that because we're constantly with each other. And what we've learned is that business can never come first. I never, and people will say that, you know, if you work with somebody in your family, there's a time when you have to put on the business hat and go to business, and then there's a time when you have to put on the friend or the relationship hat. For Jody and I, those hats can never come on. It has to be, our marriage has got to be the number one priority at all times. 
And as soon as that falls out of its priority list, which is on our mission statement, Zach and Jody's marriage is number one, nothing can supersede that. As soon as we let something else come over that, our marriage, start, we start to drift apart immediately. So keeping our marriage number one priority, I don't care if we're in the middle of shooting a wedding, it's not more important than my marriage. I don't care how much I've committed to that client, I've committed more to my wife. And we need to make sure this is healthy and this is on the right track more than, it. and when we do that, I feel like it's magic. You know, like there's nothing we can't do when we're together and working together. Yeah, and in that, I think it's so easy for couples who work together to think that they're having quality time with their spouse because they're with them all day. It's yeah. like, yeah, I spend, you know, every day with my husband, but <laughs> the fact of the matter is, is when Zach is turned around facing his desk and I'm turned around facing my desk and we're chatting back and forth about, hey, I need this from you and hey, can you do this and blah, blah, blah. That is not relationship building. And no. we always say that marriages require continual maintenance. I, I used to think that, you know, as soon as I get perfect in all of my flaws and Zach gets perfect in all of our <laughs> flaws, our marriage will just be perfect and we can coast. And I've realized that that's not the case. That's not the case with anything. It's always a continual day by day, hour by hour effort to be the woman that I want to be, the be, to be the woman that God has called me to be. And so it's like that, you know, with our marriage and when we're in the office, like we can't just coast along that daytime that we have together talking about business. That is not, that is not um, putting effort into our marriage. And so for us, when we're done with business for the day, we turn it off and we create a rule, you know, we have a rule between us. Like we can't talk about business outside of the office. And we have date nights where we need to be very strategic about and it's so hard sometimes not to talk about business because you can't be like, hey, how was your day? And it's like, you know what my day was. I was at my desk. I was there the whole day, you know? So sometimes it's a really hard effort to try and find some common ground other than your business. And so, but it's making those efforts to making sure that we're investing in each other as people and as spouses as opposed to as business partners. And it's hard. And, um, but it's definitely worth the effort. And like Zach said, when we do make those efforts, even in the morning, you know, like we say our office, our office hours don't start till 11 a.m. And that gives us enough time to sleep in, <clears throat> Zach, um, to sleep in, but then get up and have, you know, coffee together in the morning and breakfast and having a time of Zach and Jody, husband and wife, to connect with each other before we go into our work day. And that's been really huge for us to keep that relationship balance um, versus our work Yeah, there's a, relationship. you know, there's a, one of my favorite verses in the Bible says, what good is it to gain the world if you lose your soul? And what good is it if we even impact a lot of people but lose this in the process? And it can very easily happen. We found ourselves on the road for a week straight, hanging out, we're shooting together, we're doing business, we're working with our clients or whatever. And all of a sudden we turn around one day and we go, whoa, 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 where are we in the midst of this together as a team? And we have to stop and focus on each other and find out how's my wife doing emotionally and have I even cared about where she's at? And getting our, getting, we do a lot of checking ourselves, like, hey, we need to get back on track here. And we've even started doing things like at five o'clock, we take our cell phones and put them in the bedroom because we realize it's a, const, a yeah, it's a constant source of taking my attention away from my wife and putting it onto Twitter or onto Facebook or my email or some exciting thing that's going on with some person I've never met and I may never meet. And if I do, it'll be for five seconds. And that all of a sudden becomes more important than my relationship with my wife or my friends. Um, so we've been learning to put those things away and to really rest and just enjoy each other's company and build each other up and love each other. And it's been good. It's know? hard. Because we've had times when it wasn't that way. We've had times when the marriage was suffering and something had to go. And we only have so much time in the day and we have to put things in priority and sometimes it's not worth it to make even an extra big chunk of money if it's going to mess up our relationships. Yes and yes. And Jody actually come down uh, three clicks in power. Perfect, you guys, looking at each other.
each other. Jody, go up, back up a little bit. This is great, you guys. Jody, move to your left just a little. Perfect. Oh my gosh, one more. And let's have you guys cheek to cheek, actually looking right at my light, right up there at my light. Yeah, perfect. Oh my gosh, one more, amazing. Let's do one kiss and one and you guys are done. Last shot, I promise. Make sure you have full power. That is rock star, you guys. Epic. Mariel, you look amazing. Here we go, one, two, three. Hotness, and that is a wrap. <laughs> well, I am Zach. And I am Jody, this man's wife. And we are the Greys, and we have just, just been, been framed. framed. <laughs> that was lame. <laughs> Frame Season 3 was brought to you by Bay Photo Lab. Like the music? Special thanks to Triple Scoop Music. Frame Network giveaways are brought to you by B&H. Head to giveaways.framenetwork.com for your chance to win. Find out more about the equipment used in this episode on framenetwork.com. on the next episode of Frame. Oh, hello there. I didn't notice you. I was too busy being handsome. I am so excited to be here. This is like the coolest thing. I've, I like would not miss this for the world. I watched the record spin around. I've decided to go out on a limb here. Yes. Thank you for joining us. I'm Melissa New. And we're up against the world. Oh, I didn't say my name. Head to framenetwork.com and create your passport login to gain exclusive access to Framed and your favorite shows. Only on Flix.